Let's just count to three. One, two, three, and say at the same time what does it look like to you. One, two, three. Press start. So what has MG Australia been up to lately over the first couple of months in 2023? Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dimitri, I'm your host here, and this is MG Owners Australia. No, I'm not associated with MG Australia. It is not an official institution of sorts. I'm just a private owner in case you're just joining me here. Some people in the comments seem to be confused, so I thought I will make this very, very, very clear. A journalist from drive.com.au has posted an article just the other day, just like yesterday, about apparently MG still being on track and still having plans to roll out, believe it or not, MG5. Petrol model has nothing to do with EV that apparently is there somewhere in Europe, a model that I know very little about. But apparently they want to roll out, you know, according to this source, they want to roll out a sedan car in Australia, which is MG5. Let's take a very close look together at what it looks like and let's just count to three, one, two, three, and say at the same time, what does it look like to you? One, two, three, Mercedes-Benz. What did you say? Write it down in the comments down below and let's turn into a very funny game. Come on, take a look at this car, especially from the back. It does look like one of those expensive, massive, kind of slopey back and slopey front Mercedes-Benz cars. Of course, the quality is going to be different. We all know we operate within that cheaper car space but it is quite funny because if i joke uh, periodically and say that i drive havel h6 and it is a poor man's chinese version of range rover i still believe that and i still enjoy the car by the way then this looks like if it's true and according to drive.com.au it's still on track to be released in the first half of 2023 so soon enough yeah if we believe them it does look like basically a poor man's Mercedes-Benz with a bit of a sporty feel to it. It's a sedan. Sedan is not a car that is for everyone. Absolutely. Yes, they are going to be competing also according to drive.com.au and I can see it that they are trying to compete with Toyota Corolla. Good luck. Good luck dethroning Toyota Corolla, <laughs> probably the most popular vehicle historically in Australia after Toyota Hilux. But... Um, it is in direct competition with that car, although quite much more interesting visually, arguably, subjectively. I I'm still I'm still a fan of competitor brands, and MG is very firmly one of them. I love competition. I think an underdog story is a good story. Generally, we Australians, we're very much supportive of underdogs, generally. And in this particular case, I'm going to say that MG, as boring as I find lineup of the cars, um, so far in Australia, what they are offering us already for a couple of years, it feels like MG. Um, I do think that they are a very worthy underdog to continue supporting mm, for what it's worth and continue keeping an eye on. So, so they are taking a swing at Toyota Corolla and according to the reviewer from drive.com.au at Hyundai i30 <clears throat> which is subjective like i'm not quite sure if it's if it's quite there that comparison but okay let's leave it let's leave it at that now as always as i say what is the biggest advantage of mg cars compared to anything oh okay not maybe not not havel but let me rephrase this what is the biggest advantage of chinese manufactured or owned enterprise owned cars in Australia compared to any other more established brand, Toyota. Let's keep Toyota in mind. What is the biggest benefit? Price point, right? Price point is the biggest benefit. Yes, some design elements, but ultimately the price point. Because can you get all this luxury in some other brands? Of course you can, but you will pay an absolute arm and a leg for it, 50 grand plus. And this you get for 30 ish, and I'm rounding up things here, okay? But hopefully you understand. We're not splitting hairs here. I'm just trying to make a point. So, if they do go ahead and roll out this sedan, first of all, they are addressing a very specific niche, not mass market. I'm going to maintain this position and in encourage and invite and a conversation in the comments down below that we haven't had in a while. So let's have one, yeah, uh, before we forget the way it goes, the fun that we used to have as a club. Uh, sedans are, I'd say, a very old school, don't hate me, 
it's an old school preference. Mercedes's with those nice slopey kind of a little bit of a I'm gonna say limo feel to them. They are a specific particular luxury kind of brand. So people who are after that look, they are simply not gonna go for MG5 because because everyone knows that it's a cheaper brand. So the, their desire of those people to hit that image of a couple or a specific businessman or a very wealthy retiree who is driving a Mercedes, that edge is not going to be met by MG5, no matter how good the car is. I think you would agree. So that's my first point. So who really is this car for then? For those who want similar look anyway, and they don't care that their neighbors, their colleagues, their friends, their family are going to see pretty transparently that you didn't buy a Mercedes. you just a Mercedes lookalike. So my point is that for us, for you and I, for my Uber driver friends, for just practical Australians who are middle class like me, we want value for money. We got what we wanted. I'm not trying to impress anyone with my Havel or with my MGs. I hope you are the same. If we even think for a split second that they're trying to resemble a Mercedes-Benz, well, that good luck to them because Mercedes-Benz sells on luxury. It's a private club of its own. It's a religion, I would almost dare say. And even try to compete with that for MG5 is a fool's errand, is what I would call it. But let me know in the comments below how you feel. Now, if we look at the other side of this potential swing, that MG is about to take at the market, okay? And, and this is not to encourage them. It's just us intelligently, hopefully, discussing their possibilities and their chances of success here, yeah? The other side of it is, if they go against uh, prominent players in that sedan market of, let's say, beloved by all the generation of Australians, Toyota, um, Corolla, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say Camry as well here, but I don't even know if they make new Camrys anymore, but you know what I mean, like we, when we talk about classic Toyota sedans, yeah, that market is so old, I'm sorry, I don't judge, it's just a description, it's so old and it's so ingrained and set in its ways of Toyota means quality, China means cheap, that good luck to MG to try and, br try and breach that uh, market as well. So I hope you understand where I'm going with this without making it too long of a rant of video. Even if it looks like a Mercedes and it looks interesting, I'll, I'm going to give them that. They are not going to succeed competing against its most obvious look-alike, more expensive brand rival simply because those cars are not bought for convenience. Those cars are bought to impress and to show your business stakeholders how wealthy of a businessman you are to show your numerous relatives, ethnic relatives, how rich you are, and that kind of stuff, I don't judge. Um, on the other hand, we have Toyota Corolla owners, Toyota Camry owners, who are very much set on Toyota, and due to their age category, these people are less likely, I'm not denying them the possibility to see, see the light and make more, fi more smart financial choices during their retirement, but they probably are also not gonna sway towards this. So who is this car for, is my main question. I leave it open, this question, yeah? Now, the reviewer in the, on drive.com.au who published this article also said that if Chinese, uh, in China apparently this car is already for sale, and if Chinese price points are of any indication for us of what to expect in Australia, they are going lower models for 25,000. I assume Australian dollars in that review because it was published on Australian website, but maybe there is a slim chance that he's talking about American dollars. You go, go to drive.com.au. I'm not here to promote their publication rather than make a reference to it. So if you want to search for the original, go ahead and read it. Let's speculate that at the top of the range, this MG5 entering Australian market is going to be positioned if Chinese price point is anything to go by around 30 grand that is the price in china if that is anything to go by i can tell you that australia tax is gonna automatically add 10 to fifteen thousand dollars to to the price point of this car so you're looking not just at something that's not a mercedes not just at something that's not convincing enough to be as sturdy and as fit for purpose as toyota camry or toyota corolla is um, but it also isn't going to be cheap. I don't think it's going to be 30 grand. I don't think it's even going to be 35. 
I think it's going to be 40, 45 grand and let's check, cross check and return to this point of discussion and it would be fun to leave the comments now and then go back um, and talk about this once the car actually hits the market and they are saying that it's the first half of 2023 so preferably and presumably uh, we're going to see something about this by July 2023 would be nice for us to check in and I'm sure we'll have a lot of other check-ins in between but this is one topic that I want to take a look at. As I said in many on many other occasions, I don't just bag Chinese cars, but neither do I promote them. I try to be fair in my ownership reviews as well as what I think about the brand, how it how it stands currently in Australia, and especially as the new year rolls in 2023 right now. I do believe that the lineup of MG vehicles in Australia, while they were getting a proper foothold and stuff, was a bit stale and I referred to it as boring yeah I sampled two of these vehicles one of them I was more disappointed with another one I'm still holding on to it's a cool vehicle it's a good one uh, but at the same time they looks like they are one way or another they are reaching MG is reaching a point where they are ready to expand and add another model to its lineup good very good to see that's very very good to see right it's also good to hear and see, well, I kind of have to add, uh, connect the dots here without getting any official confirmation on this, because as opposed to popular belief, I don't have a direct line to MG uh, headquarters who will tell me, Dimitri, this is what's happening. No one tells me that. I speculate. We heard that MG4 EV was opening some pre-orders for Australia to be fulfilled in 2023. That's what I heard. Okay, from one of the sources not to be named. That seems to have just conveniently been dampened slash forgotten, swept under the carpet like it's not happening, like it never has happened. And now what we're hearing through relatively informed, fairly prolific center stage sources such as drive.com.au, but I'm sure we will start seeing more and more and more of these news pop up in the other, like car sales and God knows where else. Soon enough, it looks like MG5 petrol model is where they're going with this. Good. While I said in this video, already expressed my position that I don't know and I don't see how this car, again, everything is going to be in the price, yes, but I don't see how it's set up as a product to be consumed versus some other product, because there's always other product for consumption, whatever you're consuming as a, as a person buying goods or cars, whatever you want. I don't see how, where is the niche? Where is that niche that they think it's going to take? And I deliberately didn't drive that point, but I'm going to wrap up with it. Sedans are not SUVs. SUV is everyone's car. SUV people would just go for simply because they can't afford another one, so they'll get this SUV. That's ultimately, in a vastly simplified way, why I went with a Havel. Yeah, because I wanted an SUV as well. I'm just an average Joe, right? This is a sedan. It's a very specific market that I don't think is that open for it. But surely they have some smart people who are checking the market and they think that there must be a niche that they try to uh, attack if they go ahead with this. Now seems like a fairly confirmed rumor of MG5 coming to Australia soon enough. This is where I'm going to wrap up because otherwise it turns too ranty, too lengthy. I'm getting too hot in this car talking to you as well as um, speculative. And I want to limit speculation in this case. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think? A, have you heard of MG5? Do, B, do you like the photos that I'm projecting here on the screen? As well as if you want to go and read the article and just check, do your own research, please go ahead, let me know what you find, yeah? Because my time is limited and interest that I want to put into this is limited too. I keep an eye on it, as you can see. But beyond that, you know, it's neither here or there. It's a casual hobby for me as well. Um, what do you think? Do you think MG5 is going to succeed in Australia? And also, do you agree with me that regardless of whether or not it will succeed, MG Australia specifically pivoting towards a petrol vehicle being added to the lineup is in any case a better option and a smarter thing for our infrastructure here than rolling out yet another EV. Because I believe that on that, that's a smart decision. On the type of a model that they're going to offer us, not so much. And that's where I'm going to leave you today, my friends. It was good to check in with you. I welcome friendly discussion in the comments down below, as always. Thank you very much.
Bye for now. Talk to you next time.